Uh, tensions between the United States and China have flared again over Taiwan just a week after the Sea Biden summit. A U.S. warship has sailed through the Taiwan Strait. Beijing has been quick to react, sending a warning to Washington. The patrol was the first through the area since the two presidents sat down to talk. The U.S. Navy says the USS Nilius conducted a routine transit through international waters. It says the move demonstrates America's commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific. Let's get the perspective from Beijing and Washington first to Olivia Xiong. Olivia, how severe is the warning from China? Well, these are certainly stern words from Beijing, not unusual, but significant given its timing. And we've seen the Chinese military in a statement say that sending a U.S. warship through the Taiwan Strait was a threat to regional peace and stability, adding that the Chinese military closely tracked this vessel. The military also vowing to do whatever, uh, take whatever necessary measures to counter provocations. But such a statement a message from Beijing is not unusual. It issued a similar one last month when the US and Canada each sent a warship through the Taiwan Strait. But this time, the timing is significant as it's just been a week since Chinese President Xi Jinping met his US counterpart, counterpart Joe Biden in that closely watched virtual summit where we know that Taiwan was top of the agenda. And so with this latest move, we've seen a Chinese commentator on state television say that the U.S. actions proved that U.S. politicians are trans untrustworthy as they see this as the U.S. going back on some of its commitments. If you recall, President Xi during that meeting warned uh, his U.S. counterpart that uh, U.S. support of Taiwan independence was akin to playing with fire. Chinese side also keen to play up President Biden's commitment saying that uh, the U.S. does not support Taiwan independence independence, that it reaffirmed the One China policy, as well as committed to meaning, maintaining peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. And so this latest move is being viewed as the U.S. going back on its commitment. And even though this, this meeting was meant to have dialed down tensions between the two countries, observers say it's clear that both sides still remain far apart on many sticking points, including over Taiwan. And so it's likely that tensions in this area are unlikely to die down anytime soon. Olivia, picking up your comment on President Xi comparing U.S. actions on Taiwan with playing with fire. Beijing has been getting increasingly tough on Taiwan with a warning to firms operating on the mainland. That's right. We saw mainland authorities warn Taiwanese companies that in a statement that they have to draw a line against Taiwanese independence forces. And the big picture here is that we know China views Taiwan as part of its territory. And it has said before that it is willing to use force if necessary to bring the self-ruled island under its control. Also, Beijing has been wary of Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen and her pro-independence democratic progress. Party. And so we've seen Beijing step up pressure on the island on several fronts. And we know that earlier this month, Beijing had also for the first time detailed punishment for those it deemed uh, pro-independence forces. And we had seen them say that diehard supporters of independence would be criminally responsible for life. And several Taiwanese politicians had been named and put on a blacklist. And now we see that warning for uh, companies as well. On Monday, we saw state media report that a Taiwanese conglomerate, Far Eastern Group, was punished by law enforcement authorities here for a range of issues. Mainland authorities not confirming whether this was linked to that punishment for pro-independence uh, forces. But Beijing has said before that it would never allow people who support Taiwan independence and damage cross-strait relations to make money on the mainland. With Taiwan's, Taiwan independence being viewed as a red line for Beijing, and so it's likely we are going to see Beijing continue to exert pressure on the island. 
Our thanks to that, Olivia Xiong in Beijing. Now let's take you to Washington, D.C. Kate Fisher joins us live now for more on this. Kate, what message is the United States trying to send here with what it says is just routine activity? Well, I think that's just it. It's trying to show uh, Beijing that it will continue to do what it considers to be perfectly within its rights under international law. This is a message from the United States to say, uh, look, we've had really good conversations, but on this, uh, where, where it comes to the, uh, the passage of uh, the US military, we will continue to do what we are allowed to do under international law. The uh, US giving a strong statement saying that this was a routine transit through the Taiwan Strait, uh, demonstrating the US's commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific, uh, and that the US military will fly, sail and operate wherever it is allowed under international law. So I think this is uh, the US really saying, look, I know we've got issues here, but we will continue to do this. This is a a line that we will not back down from, despite those talks with uh, President Xi just last week. This is something that, even though that was only in the last seven days, this is to show Beijing that on this kind of thing, we haven't, we're not backing down. We may want cooperation, but we are not backing down from the fundamentals that the US believes it needs to be able to do. And at the same time, Kate, Washington is still trying to improve those ties with Beijing. Yeah, this is the delicate balance that uh, President Biden is trying to walk. On the one hand, trying to show that the US is strong and will stick to what it believes in terms of uh, the international order. Yet it also knows that the Biden administration also knows that it needs to keep the lines of communication open with Beijing. Uh, the White House saying that the talks last week were all about setting up these common sense guardrails uh, rather than perhaps being aimed at improving relations. These talks were about how the US and Beijing can manage this competition that they find themselves in. Certainly that is what the White House was trying to do. So this is all about the fine line they're trying to walk between showing uh, President Xi that they are not about to roll over and, and stop doing things that they've done for many years, but at the same time trying to keep those lines of communication open to ensure that there is uh, despite the US continuing these military activities, that, that there is no misunderstanding and, and that things don't spiral out of control. Kate, thank you. Kate Fisher in Washington, D.C.